what's going on how are you guys doing i want to say thank you to everyone who has bought training and a shout out and thank you to the nerd tribe and your well-constructed comments um let's go ahead and start here before we get into the, vi the video america has no money and their credit cards are maxed out I felt that my break was something I needed to do because honestly I was devoting way too much time to the haters and the moist men and this is something I realized dealing with selling in the cars and all this other stuff so interestingly enough this morning because you know if you're a, a moist person or a hater I'm just gonna block your cup and this is something that I have noticed there was one moist person this morning who was like he deletes comments now that's very telling that's very very telling because if you were around last October when I made the R Kelly sympathizer video talking about my sexual exploits if that video me putting that video up and everything that came after, I'm still here and I'm still making more money than you are, my dear moist man. If that is not an indication to the staying power of Glendon Cameron, then you have not been paying attention. And this is what's interesting. When uh, the people hated that I deleted their comments, and one of the reasons I figured this out was that they were like, that's the only power that they had was to leave a comment. Because they couldn't mess with my money, they couldn't get me off YouTube, they couldn't cancel me, but they could just speak harshly about me. That's all they can do. And what I saw, because with this one moist individual, because like one of the things I used to do that was just a serious waste of time is go ahead and give them one and two and three and four paragraph responses and you know it's like just just delete the comment keep it moving and focus on the people who matter and it's interesting enough as you know there are some people i simply don't like because i feel that they disrespected me and went the wrong way and these people have youtube channels and i honestly have no clue to what they're talking about. You wanna know why? I do not invest time nor energy into people I don't like. It makes no sense. That's like checking up on the ex who dumped you and embarrassed you. It's just like, really? So for me, I do not like certain individuals, I'm not mentioning names, I have no clue to what they're doing because I'm not watching them. I'm not keeping up with them. But for some reason, my dear moist men, you guys are keeping up with me and I don't understand it. Please put it in the comments why you think that these moist individuals are keeping up with me. And this is something that I'm found to be really interesting. They now attack my supporters. Once again, shout out to the Nerd Tribe, shout out to the people who bought training courses, and it's about to get really, really better. Um, they want to engage in these conversations with the people who support me. I feel, and I'm about to say something that's going to tie in with America has no money and it's max out credit cards. I feel that these individuals don't have nobody in their life. Um, you know, if you don't like me, that's all well and good. Leave, go somewhere, go to your own, find other YouTube content that Chris watch. Just leave me alone. I, I really don't care if you don't like me. That's not a currency for me. I don't need you to like me for me to be a happy individual. But what I'm feeling is, especially, especially after October of last year, how many people ride, rock, and support Glendon Cameron? 
after that, and you, my dear moist man, you feel that you are a good person. Let me go ahead and explain something to you. No one gives a shit that you're a good person. No one cares that you've not had sex with a young girl. No one gives a fuck. And this is why many of America is suffering right now because they think of their morality, they're a good person. Consistently, I see stuff in the Google feed of TikTokers making videos where they felt that they were offended or mistreated. And at the end of the day, nobody gives a fuck. No one gives a fuck. And I feel that these individuals are just misguided fans because they can't stay away. They're like a cat that can't stay out the catnip. They just can't, they cannot. And they keep coming back, they keep watching the videos, they keep going to all my other channels, yet they don't like me. I don't understand. But that's enough of that. All right, right now, oh, before we get into that, I got some new training and I, I'm gonna work on shaping that up today because before I announce what's coming, I need to shape it up, write it out, and also I need to email the current students because they get the special perks and all this other stuff. So that's coming. But I can tell you, if you buy the program, you will get this new training. If I don't forget, it will be in the first comment or it will be in the description box. All right. Um, <clears throat> Right now, we are in a stimulus-free economy. With those trillions of dollars of stimulus money, enhanced unemployment, direct payments, special programs, tax abatements, no repos, no evictions, no foreclosures, once again, you, you guys know what I'm about to say. Luxuries, once tasted, become necessities. And a lot of people got addicted to this luxury of having enhanced unemployment, direct payments, not having to work. And as we go through this global reset, I'm here to tell you, if you were to look at the Google feed you would think that employees have the power. There are many people right now that think that employees have the power. I'm about to hip you to the golden rule. The golden rule isn't do unto others, it's not that. It's he who has the gold makes the rules. Who has the gold? Is it the employees or the employers? Right now, you got people who are like, I am not going to work that low wage, non-career type job. I'm just not going to do it. And they're homosexuals, they're living with their parents, or as a recent case goes, actually, I'm going to tell you a story. <sighs> Shout out to the real estate trapper. Because you said this the other day and this morning, I got a text from not one, but two exes, like 30 minutes apart. It, it blew my mind. And this one ex who is very attractive, she used to say things like, you, you're so lucky to be with someone that's so as attractive as me. And I would tell her, I was like, you could be replaced in a heartbeat. Don't know, know your place. And that's what happened, because she kept saying that, popping off on that other stuff, and she didn't want to do what I want. And I was just like, one day I was like, hey, uh, I'm moving on. We're, we're not a good fit. And I dumped her, right? And then she told me I would be back. She told me that I would come begging and wanting to be with her. And that never happened never happened right so I get this long message I was thinking and this we broke up with this chick years ago 
And it was like, I was just thinking, you know, a lot of the things that you talked about in your videos and stuff, I'm beginning to see that that is true. And I begin to realize that I was not the best girlfriend for you. And she went on and she's like, I understand that clearly you probably have someone, which I do, which I do. And this is the offer that came in my text box this morning. I would be willing to be your second in exchange for a little help. Let me go ahead and run that again. I will be willing to be your second in exchange for a little help. My current status is I have three roommates. I am working as a waitress or server, same thing, waitress, server, and I can't save any money between paying the bills and maintaining my car. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. And she sent me a picture and she sent me some dirty pictures and stuff. Now, this is what's so funny about her. This chick would, would go nuts if I got a text from another girl or she would lose it if she was going through some of my stuff and she would see that I was talking. She would lose it for, for her to say that I am willing to be your second. To be your second tells you how hard this economy is spanking that ass. That's the, the message I got this morning. Second message I got this morning. Hey, how are you doing? Just thinking about you. And then this is what I'm doing because I'm in my petty Patrick mode. I was like, you know what's funny? I just heard from you. Let me share. I screenshot it and share her the first text message. And I was like, are you struggling? Are you financially pressed? You need a little help. Is that why you're reaching out? Her response was, yes. <laughs> I was sitting there like, what's in the water? What's going on? This was just blowing my mind, right? Because essentially, um, I'm not messing with either one of them. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm good. Thanks for the offer. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's funny because last night I was talking about the R. Kelly episode with my current girlfriend and some of my sexual exploits and the Craigslist stuff. That, that, that doesn't bother her. It just doesn't bother her. You know, we were actually having a really good conversation about that last night. But... This really ties in to the topic today. America has no money, no cash, and is maxing out the credit cards. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. This is the first one. And hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got like 10,000 pictures on my phone. It goes back quite a way. And that's the second one. So, fellas, now I understand red pill, black pill, purple pill, whatever pill, but as I have experienced and as, as the real estate trapper has experienced, 
a lot of women are coming off those high horses. Mm. It's, it's interesting. But this is just to show you how bad it has gotten. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the future. Right now, I want you to think of this like a football game. We're in the first quarter. <laughs> That's where we are. We're in the first quarter. We're in the first quarter of a football game, and this is the scoreboard right now. This is the scoreboard. Because here's the thing. We're in this stimulus-free economy. Now, at the moment, as I said before, there is no credit crunch. Credit plug, Real Estate Trapper, and myself have got tons of credit this year. Tons of credit. And going forward, those who have a high FICO score, financials, and tax returns will still be able to get credit in the current credit environment. The current credit environment is dramatically different than the credit environment that happened in 2008, after 2008. Totally different environment. Uh, people's HELOCs were shut down, credit cards were canceled, and during the early stages of the pandemic, we went through that. People were getting their credit limits cut because no one knew what was gonna happen, right? But currently there is not a credit crunch. And that's why I keep using the, the words currently. Currently there's not a credit crunch. But in the future, I feel that we will have one because of the record number of defaults. At the moment, we have people who are putting groceries on their credit card, gas on their credit card, medicine on their credit cards because they don't have the cash to buy these necessities. These are necessities. You need food, you need gas. If you have a certain health condition, you need your medicine. And people are putting these necessities on their credit cards because they don't have any cash. Now, part of this is, I feel, that the American public was set up. Remember, and some of you, are, a lot of you are new, but I was making videos pre-pandemic, early pandemic, and talking about, hey, you're getting this stimulus money, you should be going to school, you should be getting some new skills, you should be doing this, versus sitting home, smoking weed, playing video games, and having sex. Very few people listen to me. And now, this is what I mean by the setup, because here's the thing. You just cannot give people trillions of dollars and not expect these people to kind of get um, addicted to it. It's like, you know, giving someone their first hit of crack or their first hit of heroin, their first cocaine hit. You, whoa, that was good. Give me some more. You, can't, you just can't do that. And this is something that I talked about almost three years ago that you just could not be giving people money like that. And then to make matters worse, they didn't just give a certain demographic money. No, 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 no. Oh, they actually gave a certain demographic that I'm about to talk about money, more money than they were making when they were working. You can't do that. Case in point, a lot of girls went to OnlyFans during the pandemic. A lot of girls from Instagram, a lot of girls started stripping and they got a, a little taste they can't work regular jobs now. They're unfit to work a regular job because of that OnlyFans money that they, they can't do it. You, you just cannot irrevocably alter someone like that financially. You just can't do it. And now, 
no, no, no. The chickens are coming home to roost. We have a bunch of people who, when I was in the military, you can only take so much leave because if they felt that if your leave went, and it was like three months, you could you couldn't go, you could do two months. Well, I think active, let me remember, I think when you were on active duty, you could do a month. And if you were doing terminal leave, you could do whatever leave you had. But literally the military has known for decades that if you come outside of the sphere of the military experience, you will lose your military bearing. And literally it's a month. These people had enhanced stimulus and direct payments for almost two years. And now we're in a stimulus free economy. And this to me was the most vulnerable segment of society. These were people who were doing DoorDash and Uber and Lyft and working in warehouses because their skill sets were not that good. And this to me was the most economically vulnerable part of the population. And this is why I keep saying they were set up. They were set up for failure because now, right now, if you are an employer and you have a bunch of low wage jobs, you're struggling. You're struggling to hire people. You're struggling to hire people. And this is going to last, I, pres I say for another year, because just like there's two women who reached out to me this morning. <sighs> At some point, economic reality is going to hit. And like, you know, you saw her. She's a pretty chick. Somebody going, somebody going to do it. She going to get her sugar daddy. She go, somebody going to do it. Ain't going to be me, but somebody going to do it because of the way she looks. But once again, that's another market that I have not discussed. I feel just like the strip club money should slow down, the sugar daddy money slowed down because it's kind of like the same genre, you know? And I feel that a lot of women who got used to that lifestyle, got used to having a sugar daddy are now like, what the hell do I do now? What do I do now? And this is a big question because you got a lot of people, they're, they're, they're exhausted their savings, uh, they maxed out their credit cards, if they have stock, and this is one of the things, and this, this is something that happened to one of my friends. Um, and we used to have this, uh, this conversation because I was always pro-business and he was always pro-investing. And he had a pretty significant income, about half a million a year, 500,000 a year. So he would invest 150, $200,000 a year in the market. So with that type of shovel, you know, he was building a pretty significant portfolio, but he was not saving any cash. And his wife developed cancer and she couldn't work. And they were fine for a minute. And then he lost his job. You know how hard it is to replace a $500,000 a year job? But because they weren't living to the top of their income because he was investing so much money in the market, they were kind of good for a minute and then he had to start selling the stock and the market had crashed. And uh, you know, we were having this conversation because um, this was um, pretty much the beginning of COVID and I was making more money than I ever made in my life and he was suffering because he lost his job, she had lost her job, she was dealing with cancer. And, you know, he, he recently reached out to me and he was like, you know, you were right. Because when he had that job, which was the shovel, you know, and his, his portfolio was going up, he literally had to sell his whole portfolio to pay off medical bills, to live, and he had to sell it at the time that the market was down. So not only did he, lose his job, he lost a lot of money, a lot of money. 
And this is where many, many people are finding themselves at the moment. They're finding themselves in this market and they're scratching their heads. And I feel this is why the number of online scams are at an epidemic level. Because if you notice, I'm kind of leaving. Because, you know, one of the things I did during my break is I went through and hit the little dots. And all of the people that I personally know are lying to you. I'm no longer consuming their content. I'm getting ready to sharpen my focus because like the people who buy the courses, the nerd trap, there's a small but strong group of people who understand and get the message that you're not going to go from broke dick Danny to pay Percy overnight. It ain't happening. And these guys understand that. So this is the community that I'm gonna work on serving because also I made this decision. You know, there's a lot of stuff about my YouTube channel blowing up. Uh, I had 4,000 subscribers and I made 1.5 million in a year. So I don't need my YouTube channel to blow up to make a lot of money. This is something that I have learned, you know, on my YouTube journey. So I am making content that is useful, helpful, and serves people. I am not making clickbait bullshit. I am not you know, I got a video on a B school for hustlers, the so-called business owners who are pushing all these side hustles. I am not pushing those side hustles. I am a business owner. I have an S corporation. I have a corporation. I, I pay myself a salary. I take out distributions. This is the stuff that I am going to start teaching to the people who want that knowledge. If you want to watch what's up hustlers, and if you want to be with let's go and all this other people who are just using you for views to get that YouTube money because they're not giving you useful, helpful content. They're giving you BS. If you want to watch that stuff and participate in that, God bless you. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm just going to leave it alone because I, as a seasoned entrepreneur, can see through the bullshit like, oh, that's some BS. Uh, Cody Sanchez, she's another one that lies copiously, constant lying. And people like the, because here's the thing. Once again, during this first quarter of the economy melting down, we're in the first quarter, uh, a lot of people are going to have what I would consider a moment of reckoning. And it's like, you can believe in all of the pretty lies and all of the little scams but at some point reality is going to enter your household like the person that i know is homeless had to move her kids in with her ex and now he's facing the same these are moments of reckoning all of the fancy lies and smooth talk and slick talk and all that stuff that ain't gonna serve you in that moment of reckoning when you got to get real with yourself because your situation has gotten real. I know about that. I used to be homeless. I know what it's like to sleep in my car. I know what it's like to on a cold winter night be turning my car on and be turning my car off to have the heater on because I'm out in the middle of a parking lot sleeping in my car because I don't have a home. Sarah, it sucks. It's terrible. It's terrible. It is really, really bad. Really, really bad. And um, one of the things that I have come to understand is until you have that moment of reckoning, nobody can tell you shit. Until you have that moment of reckoning. Because when I was... Uh, I loved meeting someone who had went through a salesperson and then because you know these people would come to you and they were like well our budget is thirty thousand dollars and they would have a requirement for about two hundred thousand dollars worth of office furniture and I was like that ain't gonna work you can't even do that you buying used office furniture right and after they had that moment of reckoning 
This is when clarity enters the room. This is when people started to get really, really clear on what's going to happen. And like I said, until, because there are many of you who feel that investing is going to make you a lot of money quick. There's a guy on YouTube by the name of Richard Coffin called The Plain Bagel. He breaks it down. There, there's several, and he actually gets a lot of response because he works in the investment financial space. And the truth of the matter is, you're not going to get rich ever, not no time soon, but ever with a small level of capital. And the small level of capital is 100 to 400 bucks a month. That is not going to make you a millionaire and not even in 20 years. And also understand that we were in an 11 year bull run. That's over, baby. And a lot of people living in the past and they're clinging on until they have that moment of reckoning because real estate trapper said it. It's like you buy on a dip and it gets dippier. And after you go, you do that for about five or six months, you buy, you dollar cost average in and it gets dipped. Because once again, I have bought some stocks. I have bought a dividend investment, a dividend ETF. And literally after I bought these investment instruments, the market dipped. And it hasn't returned to the price. It hasn't returned back to the level it was when I bought it. And I bought these stocks because, you know, I've had all people's like, you know, like, all right, for my investment people, I'm about to say something that's going to be extremely elitist and it may even be considered condescending. You're an investor, you know the market, you know all this price action, and, but I still make way more fucking money than your dumb ass. I, I'm, I'm like, give me a break in one month. One month, I make more money in one month than you make in years in investing. But for some reason, you're trying to, you know, th th this is one of the things. It used to be that people who were better, demonstrated they were better, got respect. Not with you puppies. Not with you puppies. It's like, hey, I'm in the markets. I know how the markets move. We got money under management. Okay, enjoy the slow lane, the wealth. Enjoy it, knock yourself out. But until you make more money than me, I'm not listening to your monkey ass. Cause I'm just sitting there like, once again, in my video, all of these so-called business owners who are pushing side hustles. I've never really pushed side hustles. You know, I've talked about starting, you know, an eBay business. Once again, I use the term eBay business because here's the thing guys. You've got to be intentional and diligent to make money. And this whole thing with trading, like are there traders who make a lot of money? Yes, there are. And typically they're corporate traders. Uh, they're, they're the Chase, they're the Bank of America, they're the Wells Fargo's trading desk. They hire MIT grads, they hire PhDs, they have uh, these supercomputers, they have the best information. Yeah, I think those guys on average and here and there, you will have an outlier. Malcolm Gladwell's outlier. You will have a person here or there who will get in the markets and do extremely well. Outlier, atypical, not the norm. The average person who gets into trading loses money. This is statistical fact backed up by a ton of data. So yeah, you got this one guy over here who's crushing it in trading. And for this one guy, you literally have 10,000 people losing money trading. So, you know, once again, to me, running a business is easier. It's just easier. And with that, we're gonna get into some new training. Like I said, I, I gotta define it. I got to email the current student list what's going on first before I tell you guys but I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Because right now, America's broke. And we're in the first quarter of this economic situation. First quarter, and the, the home team ain't winning. Home team, it's like 30 to zip. And it's just the first quarter. We ain't even, we ain't even in the second quarter. And it's gonna get worse. 
And for those of you who's like, hey man, can you stop with the doom and gloom? I have B School for Hustlers. I have the corporate game. These channels don't touch on none of these topics. I've talked about it before, but for some reason you haven't found your way over there. But you like being over here. You're not my program director. The content ain't gonna change. This is the Institute of Economic Thought with insights, wisdoms on the economy. That's what we do over here. If you want business advice, how to make your life better, go to B-Schools for Hustlers. Go to the corporate game. That's where I got that content. That's what you need to do. So if you want the new content, which I'm shaping up, go ahead, get the program. Links below, it's gonna be in the first comment, and then we can get you up to speed because winter is here.